And what I'd like to do is share with you Dr. McDougall's color picture book on food poisoning, on food poisoning and how to cure it by eating beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and rice. <clears throat> However, before I put this color picture book out, I wanted to test it to make sure that it worked. What I did is I sat down with my six, eight, and 10-year-old grandsons who live right near us. They're Heather's children, live right near us. And I sat down with them and I went through the 66 pictures in the color picture book and I asked them, do you understand this? And they said, yes, Grandpa, we understand. So I figured if they understood it, everybody could understand it. And what I did is I used the universal signs for go and stop and caution. And that helped them understand what I was talking about in terms of what they're supposed to do. So if you'd like to read Dr. McDougall's, this is all, I'm not writing any more word books. If you'd like to read Dr. McDougall's color picture book on food poisoning and how to cure it, you just go to my website, it's there. And as I say, it's probably in 15 languages now and hopefully we get it in 30, 40, 50, 60 languages so people can understand. Food poisoning. You must, I think, I think these days, that's all I look at it as, is you must look at this as food poisoning. And when you do, when you look at it as food poisoning, it all makes sense, you know exactly what to do. Like for example, say what was the, the book Endurance? Anybody read the book Endurance? About uh, Shackleton's trip to the Antarctic? I just finished it, good book. The, the, the men, they were suffering from lead poisoning, you remember that? In the book, the, the, the men they were eating, uh, what was it, tomatoes out of lead cans, and they were suffering from lead poisoning. These are the explorers to the Antarctic back 100 years ago. And their ship, the Endurance, it sunk in the Antarctic, and all they had was can supplies, and, and the cans were made of lead, and pretty soon they started losing their hair and their fingernails, and they were suffering from lead poisoning, food poisoning. And guess what? As soon as the doctor, remember the doctor on there, as soon as the doctor discovered what it was, he stopped, the men from eating the tomatoes, which were in cans that were made of lead, and guess what happened? In a couple of weeks, the lead poisoning was cured. Same thing with methylmercury, when people are suffering from methylmercury poisoning. When you stop the food poisoning, they're cured, or say you had a uh, chronic uh, staphylococci or salmonella or listeria poisoning that was going on, you were poisoning yourself with these microbes all the time. The way you would cure it was you would stop the food poisoning, yes? All right. Well, what people are suffering from, and maybe, hopefully, when I get done with this presentation, you'll look at it from the same point of view that I do. What people are suffering from in our society is food poisoning. It's food poisoning of such a, a, a grandiose level, it far exceeds any lead poisoning, tobacco poisoning, heroin poisoning, alcohol, cocaine poisoning, alcohol poisoning, all the poisonings you can imagine in your family in your personal life, in your community, in your country, in your world, all the poisons you can imagine put together are insignificant compared to the food poison that's going on. Now, in terms of the toll that it takes on you personally, your family, your community, your nation, and planet Earth. Food poisoning. Food poisoning, and, and the way you cure food poisoning is you stop the food poisoning, but you have to recognize it first as food poisoning, otherwise you're kind of helpless. This is food poisoning. Two thirds of people, according to current statistics, suffer from food poisoning in this form. They're overweight or obese. And of course, being overweight and obese, that's associated with more heart disease, more breast cancer, more colon cancer, more prostate cancer. More, that's how you get type two diabetes. So food poisoning results in being overweight and obesity and the secondary manifestations that you see so commonly in our society. This is one result of food poisoning. This is food poisoning. Type one and type two diabetes is due to food poisoning. And if you stop the food poisoning, people with type 2 diabetes are cured, and people with type 2, 1 diabetes are greatly benefited. They're not cured. Food poisoning. 135 million people every, every year in the United States suffer from this form of food poisoning in terms of a heart attack. It's food poisoning. Food poisoning. In my May 2014 newsletter, I published an article that I wouldn't have published in the past. If I would have written this story uh, that I wrote in my May 2014 newsletter, if I had written it 20 or 30 years ago, my colleagues 
would have likely come after me, labeled me a quack, told me that I was, uh, I was uh, delusional, I was uh, misleading patients, I was keeping them from good standard arthritic care by telling them that lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and psoriatic arthritis are a consequence of food poisoning from the rich Western diet. And if you stop it, as I reported in my May 2014 newsletter, I showed you 10 cases of debilitating, deadly, inflammatory arthritis, people with rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis who just stopped the food poisoning and were cured. 10 cases published it. Didn't get a single comment from a single rheumatologist, from a single member of any medical society, any place, because at this day and age, folks, medical and non-medical, recognize food poisoning, know it to be true, and realize we have to do something about it. So this is food poisoning. Food poisoning, breast, colon, and prostate cancer are due to food poisoning. Everybody knows about the purple pill. Why does everybody know about GERD and indigestion and Nexium and the purple pill? It's because we have massive food poisoning out there. You can go into uh, pharmacies all over the world and you can see these pills for sale all over the Western world. Why? Because people are suffering from food poisoning. Food poisoning. This is food poisoning. Okay, so now you recognize, as a matter of fact, if you stop and think about it, and if you even, if you, there's even any hint in your mind that what I say is true, what you're thinking right now is, every place I look, I see food poisoning. All through my family, through my school, through my business, every place I look, people are suffering from food poisoning. Well, they are. And the only way you're going to fix it is to stop the food poisoning. Just like Shackleton and his men did with lead poisoning 100 years ago, they stopped eating out of the lead cans, and the body healed, and the food poisoning went away. Food poisoning has been recognized for thousands of years. You can go back uh, 3,500 years ago, 4,000 years ago. Look at the priests, priestess, pharaohs, kings, queens of the Middle East of Egypt, the mummies. You look at the mummified uh, remains of these aristocrats from 3,500, 4,000 years ago, and you see that they suffered from food poisoning. Just a recent report of 44 uh, autopsies, so to speak, done with CAT scans where they looked at the arteries of priests, priestess, kings, queens, pharaohs, and they found out of the 44 that they examined, 20 had extensive atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries in the heart, the kidneys, the aorta, the legs, and so on. They suffered from food poisoning 3,500, 4,000 years ago. And the aristocrats of three, four, 500 years ago, the kings and queens of the past who were fat, had the gout, had diabetes, they suffered from food poisoning. Back then, three, 4,000 years ago, or four, 500 years ago, there were only a few people who were wealthy enough to poison themselves with rich food. The difference is, is today, we have a society, thanks to the Industrial Revolution, modern technology, and fossil fuels, we have a society where everybody in Western society can afford to and does poison themselves with rich foods. Burger King, Dairy Queen, Imperial Margarine. That's why people are sick from food poisoning due to the rich Western diet. All right, so how do you fix food poisoning? This is a, a, a revelation that I've had to come through to after 40 years. I used to be a nice guy. I'm not a nice guy anymore. I used to tell people they have to do better. They have to be sensible. They have to be reasonable. They have to cut down. Nobody ever got better. I mean, I know you, most of you know that I never really did that. I was always pretty tough. But <laughs> I kind of, I kind of was nicer in the past. And it's over the last four decades of trying to help people get better that I have uh, been able to speak more clearly about what you must do. If you recognize food poisoning, just like the Nelson twins, and Willie, their brother, and Sabrina, and some of you, if you recognize that you're suffering from food poisoning that's causing acne, chest pain, breast lumps, constipation, indigestion, if you recognize that in yourself, 
or your friends or relatives, what you must do is you must stop the food poisoning. Plain and simple, you can't cut down. Why can you not cut down? The, the Nelson twins tried, they couldn't do it, they just told you. They had to recognize the problem and do it 100%. The reason is, it's not because 100% really is required, you could do 99.99%. If you could, but you can't. I know you can't. That's what I've come to the conclusion uh, about over all these many years, is people can't cut down. They can't be reasonable, they can't be sensible, they can't be prudent. They have to deal with food poisoning the same way that some of us have had to do deal with tobacco poisoning and some of us have had to deal with alcohol poisoning and some of us have had to deal with cocaine and heroin and other kinds of poisonings. What we had to do is we had to, to change our behavior is we had to stop at 100%. Believe me, I quit smoking October 20th, 1972 at 7 a.m. in the morning. The only reason I am smoke free now is because every day I get up and say, I will not smoke another cigarette. You know who I'm talking about. There are very few of you who can be moderate and smoke two cigarettes a day or have a glass of wine three or four times a week if you are the kind of personality that I am and you probably recognize. Same thing with food. If you want to get over the obesity, overweight, constipation, indigestion, et cetera, you want to change your future, you have to do what Nancy Reagan told us to do. Remember what Nancy Reagan said to the drug addicts? Yeah, that's what you have to do. There's nothing in between. You just have to say no, you have to stop doing it.